right good morning students everyone uh it's a wonderful day to start with i have got my with me a very wonderful bright young student dr juhi she has scored a rank of all india 7 in the uh, neat pg 2023 exam and she is here with us for a bit of a chat so i welcome dr juhi how are you feeling thank you so much sir i am feeling amazing finally over the last two days i have actually processed and accepted the fact that i have gotten this amazing result so yeah i'm feeling great so uh, tell me tell me what what reactions you had when you when you saw that figure that one digit usually we are not used to seeing one digit at least not the 99.99% people in the india so how does it feel to yeah. see that one digit so first i saw my marks and i thought that was my rank and okay. still i was happy because i never gotten like i've only gotten three digit ranks also very seldom and okay. two digit rank bhi kabhi i have never had so mm. at first i saw that marks i thought i thought that's my rank my friends were congratulating me we checked it together okay. and then i was like wait that's not the rank that those are the marks uske baju mein rank hai and then i lost it i was i was alone i was not with my family at the time so i called my parents okay. they were having a very uh, very weird reaction we were all finding it very hard to believe i yeah. checked it about 10 15 times yeah. and only then i told everybody else so yeah it was very very difficult to believe it felt unreal yes. and it was amazing no i can totally understand because yeah nobody actually Uh, very few people they have this insight where they feel that they might have gotten a rank like this but yes your reaction was as normal as it could be so very heartiest congratulations so tell us something about you from where you have done your undergraduation and how did you approach the studies and everything uh, tell us little bit about you yeah so uh, sir i did my mbbs from sage gs medical college and km hospital in mumbai and i am still doing my internship this was my first attempt i have three months of internship still to go okay. and uh, yeah like we i did not expect to do this well in the first attempt so it's quite shocking to me as well and i started studying like i had joined dams uh, back in 2020 before the lockdown and all happened i had joined the foundation batch back in 2020 and after lockdown happened i was uh, using the e medicos app and the lectures which were being live streamed on there right so then how did you approach uh, from your foundation days to the pandemic and then uh, here with final year and internship was that a there a pattern that you establish of your study or was it like you just followed uh, the class schedule and took it one step at a time yes sir. so uh, in third minor because of the lockdown my main priority was to finish as many lectures as possible anyways because i had joined foundation i knew that that one year we were going to finish as many lectures uh, as possible and finish off writing the notes and get done with that part and because back then there was this uncertainty surrounding whether we will have neat or next mm -hmm. even though i was in foundation batch and usually it goes up to internship they were we were trying to hurry it up and finish the lectures within one year and finish all the subjects so i watched many videos as many as possible and finished writing my notes in that year 2020 and beginning half of 2021 okay. and this was all i did in third minor then in final year i did not uh, pay so much attention to my mcq studying or my neat pg study because i was more concerned with passing final year and just um, doing all the final year subjects the major subjects so i was reading those textbooks i was attending postings so not so much attention to am um, doing mcqs or anything properly studying for neat pg i started that in uh, june of last year when my internship started okay. so i first time started reading all the notes which i had made and i was doing mcqs uh, on like any app i could find i was doing all mcqs which i could find and i was doing them while uh, doing my internship work so i was keeping the mcq solving process for when i am tired or when i can i think i can multitask and i can do it along with something else and all the notes which i was reading i was doing it at home in library like in the early morning before i had to go for internship i used to wake up early and i used to read something then in the evening after uh, after after i came back from the hospital i used to sleep for some time and then again wake up and read notes 
so majority of note reading i started uh, once internship began i used to do mcqs while i was doing something else so i was not doing mcqs dedicatedly like i was not sitting down and abhi mcqs karenge mm-hmm. that's not what i was doing yeah so that is actually a very uh, very brilliant plan that you hatched up there like it's it, you have epitomized the smart study what we often say that one has to be smart while he's doing internship despite of having less time you made it better than most of the people out there because you divided your time and uh, but I, i would feel that the crux of everything was that you worked really very hard when everybody else was not that is your third minor so you actually kind of took advantage of that lockdown period where uh, you did not have to physically attend the college and get involved in the college activities so you sat down and you completed all the notes so you listen to all the lectures and you made your own notes right yes handwritten feel, notes yeah so did you feel the difference because obviously you had all the material with you you had all the textbooks you have everything did you feel the difference between something that you have written yourself versus something that has been written by someone else definitely sir i used majority of all the subjects which i did i had my own handwritten notes for everything even major subjects like surgery and obgyi i had my handwritten notes and because it was handwritten i, I think i could remember like photographic memory also plays a big part in uh, remembering stuff so you can remember literally that i had written this flow chart on this so side it, of the notebook it must have happened in exam that you would have gotten a question and you would have remembered okay this is on this page on the right side at the top i made a goal line i wrote there yeah. yeah yeah see that is that is the something that is very very uh, important because this is what we always insist that something that you have written yourself makes a huge impact right so this was something that you did and how did you approach the final 2 3 months before your exam because with internship you usually you are in a big dilemma and all the interns out there they always ask this question uh, that how should we approach the last 2 months should we stop internship should we continue what should we do so how did you approach it with internship during the last few months 2 3 months so sir i did uh, my internship with a, like i completely uh, without bunking or anything i fully finished my internship till december like i did everything i attended all postings and uh, after that i from january i stopped attending because i knew that i'm going to read i'm going to need all the time because uh, by december only i had still few subjects left which i had not read for the first time also Like okay. I had OBGYN, Ophthal, ENT. Like there was so many subjects I had not touched yet, and towards this time I was starting to feel that this is a helpless thing. Like I cannot, uh, I probably will not do so well on the exam because I have revision left. I have the first reading of the subjects left, and I have to now as you get closer, you hear from your seniors that you have to give more grand tests and you have to give as many tests as possible. So I stopped attending from January onwards. So two months I did not attend. i was at home and uh, entire day i was studying i was doing revision i was doing uh, reading some subjects for the first time along with that simultaneously i was revising other subjects and then i was doing three subjects in one day and uh, i was trying to revise as much as possible the subjects which i had done earlier because i was told that you should at least do two to three revisions in my case it was not possible so what i did was i said ki last 15 days of february i am going to do one subject per day and okay. short subjects i can do two one two in one day two thoda idhar udhar i can manage mm. so mm. last 15 days i was ki i am not going to touch this right now that is for my last revision my last rapid revision mm. so from january 1st to february 15th that is the time i have to revise mm. then i gave myself Uh, about uh, suppose i had 15 days so in that 15, in those 15 days i was doing one major subject another major subject and then one short subject in mm. four days and mm. another short subject in four days i was juggling a lot of usually i am somebody who likes to focus on one subject at a time mm. and finish that then get to another like don't leave anything unattended or incomplete mm. mm. so finish everything and then move on but the thing with this exam is that you are constantly like after you solve and you finish all the subjects you realize that they are all so interrelated mm. like something that i saw in micro and something that i saw in pharma together mm. that made up a medicine mcq yeah. so it's not possible to isolate these subjects you have to mm. keep mm-hmm. thinking about all the subjects all 19 subjects simultaneously so doing multiple subjects at a single point of time 
helped in really building uh, so mere sir always says the vertical and horizontal integration yes. So yes, for yes. that you need to do all the subjects simultaneously. Only then your brain will uh, get used to pattern recognition and picking up all those small hints from an MCQ and applying it with all the knowledge from many subjects which you have. Yeah. So yes. towards the end, I was doing many subjects in one single day, and I was also giving all the tests I could find, any test which I could find. I was giving about in January test per week. uh your your voice broke uh, how many tests were you giving in january a week sorry i was uh, is it okay now sir yeah now it is better yeah no i think your connection Hello, your, yeah your connection is breaking little bit uh, can you come back to how many tests were you, you were doing in january yeah sorry so much sir no, uh, no, no. i was doing one test per week in january Okay. Before that, before when I was doing internship, I was giving one test every two weeks because okay. I still had a lot of subjects left. But I, then in Jan, I started doing one uh, test per week, and in Feb, I started giving two tests, two tests in okay. one week. And then okay. I. I was only giving. Uh, I was only revising after fifteen Feb. so no test after that and all the tests which i gave right from the beginning of the year i made sure to review the mcqs and whatever i had gotten wrong or whatever i thought was new i made it in i wrote it down in a notebook and this notebook i revised uh, one day before the exam so everything which i all the gaps in my knowledge which i had found over throughout the year i revised all that one day before the exam and i think it really helped because some mcqs literally वैसे का वैसा it was there in the exam so it helped a lot okay so just to summarize uh, your strategy uh, can i say that although you have got a perfect rank uh, being as an intern but your preparation was in no way perfect in the sense that it did not go through the traditional route of completing everything 6 months before the exam and then first round of revision and then second round of revision third round of revision so it is safe to say that despite of not being in that perfect zone of uh, doing everything before time and then multiple revisions you still maintained your tempo uh, tweaked your uh, strategy of studying towards the exam in a way that helps you because you have got limited time so you were uh, lacking in few subjects that you haven't read so you kind of amalgamated them with lot of other things that you did so despite of having an imperfect way of preparation you still had a perfect result so uh what i could guess from this is that uh, there is no perfect way of uh, there is no perfect recipe for this particular dish right success is something that just requires a constant uh, and a dedicated effort which uh, you have shown that you have done uh, over a period of a time and it has to be very intense it has to be very goal directed so smart study and utilization of your resources in a way that helps you and doesn't necessarily be a very rote way of doing things or a traditional way of doing things where it demands too much of time sometimes when you have less time you still try to juggle up lot of things and you make the best out of it so that is what i would summarize as your strategy uh, strategy yes. okay in all of these things uh, you did your notes you did your tests you did your mcqs you did your extra notebook uh, still when you sat in the exam and you face those 200 uh, 300 uh, 200 questions in front of you uh, can you tell me that one x factor that you felt that made the difference uh, in your outcome there is always that one thing that one remembers or one feels ki okay this is something that helped me the most or this created a huge difference so sir uh, like everybody will agree when i say this but this time the exam was very atypical like i felt like compared to the pyqs this time there were some questions which were very straight forward but the questions are straight forward and the options are confusing you so you are uh, so you are in such a dilemma between the two options and there is a literally a 50 50 chance that you are going to get it right or you will get it wrong and so when it comes to this main thing which is helping you is not the uh, number of revisions you've done or the number of times you've read the notes what helps you is your mcq solving ability and that is something that nobody will be able to teach you like no matter how many 
discussion videos you, you watch or no matter how much you know it's not something that can be spoon fed and i think uh, i i was really aggressive with my test solving uh, right from the get go because i got advice from my brother who is also a doctor i got advice from my seniors that you have to give grand tests right from the beginning uh, and in the beginning you are very under confident you think that you are not read anything giving these tests is going to bring you down mm. but actually right it's like uh, you are training your mind to eliminate like uh, even if you don't know what is in the question you have never read this but sometimes still the options are such ki if you, you can get rule out, yes. yeah you can totally rule out all three options and one option will be sitting right in front of you mm. and i have done this for so many mcqs in this exam mm. like i think that's why compared to all the tests which i have given before i have done uh, so well in this exam because there were so many mcqs like these which maybe some other others would have found difficult to attempt difficult, i yeah. could rule them out only on basis of this uh, strategy like i i did not know many things like fact factually agar uh, the question was factual i would have totally messed it up because mm. i had never read some of those things there mm. but then i was like i'm going to i uh, i thought that i'm going to be aggressive with my approach i knew that i was going to to attempt as many mcqs as possible i only left one mcq in the exam and everything else i attempted and i was like ki if i had have the slightest hinge uh, hunch ki i think this may be right i'm going to attempt it and that's what i did i attempted everything possible 199 mcqs and i just trusted my uh, gut feeling and my instinct and it's not a like it's not something that you say it's not tukka that gut in, that gut feeling or that instinct you are training over the span of one entire year by doing grand tests and by reviewing those tests and then figuring out why your uh, why your logic was wrong in that mcq like i have in my notebook i have written when i was reviewing my grand test i was writing ki i thought that this was the answer because of this 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 but actually the answer is this like the question was asking something else i messed up because i thought it was something else so when you are recognizing the faults in your pattern recognition then you can correct them and then mm. subconscious at a subconscious level you are training yourself to uh, eliminate the mcqs uh, sorry sir. to eliminate the other options and you can select so i think even the further exams they are going to make the exams such ki even if you have factual information you are still going to be confused about which option is correct which option is wrong so uh, solving a lot of tests right from the get go right from the beginning of your preparation and training yourself is going to definitely pay off later even if you don't realize it at the moment your subconscious mind is getting trained and it's going to pay off in the actual exam sir yeah so the art of solving mcqs and introspection lot of introspection yes, because sir. most of the time this is where uh, students they get uh, lag behind because they give tests but they never really go back and check what they thought whether it was a fluke they are just happy with that number these many correct these many wrong so they judge themselves based on that outcome while they have to see the process there will be some questions which they have just fluked they have marked correct but they can't call that their questions and whatever they have made wrong what was the reason behind that being wrong so that is actually a very wonderful that thing that you have done and i'm very surprised because usually <laughs> this insight comes after somebody fails a exam so you uh, in your internship never really given an exam like this before uh, you are very smart to actually uh, understand the tricks behind how to solve an mcq so full marks for that right thank you sir any 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 regrets that you have although with at your rank i should probably not ask this question <laughs> but still like there are six people ahead of you so let's <laughs> let's let's talk about this any regrets during your preparation which you could have done better um uh, i sir i think within the given amount of time i did the best i could i ended up leaving some subjects like i did not get time to do few subjects but uh, i feel i could manage those with my final year knowledge or on the basis of mcq solving and just getting because uh, in neat pg no mcq is just one subject like there are especially yeah. medicine mcqs or patho mcqs pharmac they combine so much knowledge from different different things like they will give you a a, a gram negative a gram staining of some bacteria then you have to identify that and then they will ask you either the disease caused yes. by it or or the antibiotic or the management which is the drug yeah. of choice yeah 
Yeah. Or they'll ask you what is the mechanism of action of the drug acting on this. So like it's so uh, complicated and yes. intricate. So yeah. yeah, it's not it's not spoon feeding. So you will manage even if you don't get to do uh, some subjects uh, and you have to leave some. So that's what I did. If I had more time, I would have liked to do those subjects as well because mm. I still feel like uh, that I have an incomplete knowledge to some extent because I did not get time to do those subjects. So if I had done those, I would feel like okay, I have everything. I know everything that there is to so you know. You have an INICT coming up, right? Are you going to be preparing for that? So I was not expecting such a great result. I might just spend the next three months enjoying and deciding my branch. Uh, okay. I'm not decided. Okay. But yeah, and uh, apart from this, I think in towards the end, I kept 15 days for my rapid revision mm. to like do one month subject. But towards the end, it got really stressful. Like I thought to myself, my uh, senior always, my brother always tells me that you only work at 66 percent efficiency. Mm. That you will not do 100 percent. The whatever plan you make, it will not go accordingly. 100% there will always be some error and you will end up wasting some time every day like out mm. of 16 hours of study if you've planned you will only do 12 I could only study for 12 hours even though I had planned so much to do mm. and at the night every day there was a lot of stress surrounding this so I think if I had planned better I, if I had kept more days for that rapid revision maybe 20 days mm. like giving yourself some buffer time Mm-hmm. So that you, because you are not a machine, you will expect that, okay, exam ke itne pass, there will be so much adrenaline. I will mm-hmm. manage somehow. Oh, mm-hmm. tabhi dekh lenge, I will do. But you should give yourself some, you should cut yourself some slack. You should give yourself some buffer days so you can catch up on the things which you have missed. Because more than anything, it adds to the stress. It leads to mental breakdowns. I have gone through multiple in the last month and it brings down your efficiency. So you should be smart. I think I would have liked to plan it better. I overestimated my abilities and I push uh, like put too much pressure on myself. So if you like to anybody out there who's planning and who is once exam comes close, if they're planning anything, you should just give yourself some buffer days, about four to five buffer days to catch up on whatever you have left out so that you are not stressing out every single day and you can calm down and focus on what you are reading right now instead of worrying about whatever I have missed or whatever I have to do in the future. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. It's, it's actually one of the most uh, real uh, topper interviews that I have taken because uh, not only that we see that you have gotten an amazing result, but you are telling us the insights of the journey and it is in no way simple as it looks like after the results have come. And uh, Secondly, is that your way of approaching these exams as well as your life is very philosophical. Something I think which you are getting from your brother, you have mentioned it two, three times. So I'm presuming you have a lot of influence uh, by him. And that is actually very good because these are the things that one has to remember and they have to keep on thinking about during these very tough months of life. It's always everything is short. uh, So this time is also going to get go away. uh, And uh, the thing that stands out is that when I asked you about regrets, the first thing that you said was that I gave my 100%, which is actually the most important thing. You only have regrets when you cheat yourself and you only know when you cheat yourself. So because you have done what you wanted to do at the level of efficiency that you finally managed to do, that is why the first answer was that I have no regrets and that is what everybody should target. Doesn't matter what the result comes. But in the end, you always have to give your 100% and just expect the best. So that was just a wonderful conversation with you. I'm actually in awe of you, uh, purely from the perspective of how you have dealt with this exam on a a very philosophical level. And you have used all those uh, knowledge and experience and advices from your peers and your uh, family. And you have made the best out of it. So my best wishes to you. Just keep doing this thing. And you have not decided on your branch. You haven't decided on your branch. Time to decide. Uh, You have a lot of time to decide. Now in the next three months of internship, you will be a celebrity in every department. So everybody will keep on calling you and say, (laughs) okay, so yeah. (laughs) So it was very nice talking to you, Jui. 
uh we have it was great talking to you yeah we have special connection i am a post graduate from mumbai i have done it from hinduja so km is something that i have okay. always come and gone and that is one institute that is revered by everybody in maharashtra and all over india you are a very important part of that institute so my best wishes to you and uh, very have a very very bright future thank you so so thank you so much okay have a good day bachche bye have a good day